Hello and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello of the 176th District in Monroe County. And I'm Representative Rosemary Brown of the 189th District in Monroe and Pike Counties. Today's program will highlight the work of Pocono Alliance. The Alliance works to fill unmet human service needs in the community. And we'll be talking specifically today about their program, Bridges Out of Poverty. Joining us now is Michael Tikiva, Executive Director of Pocono Alliance, and Arthur Pincon. And Arthur is the Pocono Info Co-Manager. Co uh, gentlemen, welcome to the program. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. We have a lot of information to cover in a short period of time, but I think there's a lot of people out here in the district, in both of our districts, that can learn a little bit about Pocono Alliance. So, Michael, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to just give us some history of Pocono Alliance, what you do for the community, and what people can learn about the organization. Sure. The Pocono Alliance has a, a great history. It started back in 1996 as the Welfare to Work Task Force to really help people that were on welfare transition off. And through that development, it became an established organization in 2002. So we're celebrating 10 years this year. And it has served as a unique incubator for the development of new organizations and new programs in Monroe County. And we've allowed great minds to come together, think about what issues need to be addressed, and then to create solutions out of that. And that's important because we are going through some very difficult times right now in the community and in our state and in the country. So it's important that we have services to meet new needs that are out there. And um, I think we talk about this several times about the fact of we want to help people so that they can get what they need and then advance themselves for the future. So what, what are some of the bigger programs that, that you find would be very helpful for some people out there? Mm -hmm. One of the things that we feel is very important is connecting people with the information that is in the community. Arthur, one of the co-managers of Pocono Info, is Monroe County's helpline and serves as a great resource for the entire county. It has a database of over 800 services and allows people to do searches online, but then also contact the, the managers of this program so that they can talk to someone to find out how to navigate the barriers that are in their lives and get connected to the resources that are made available to them. Yeah, it's hard. I think there's so much, so much information that to kind of get steered in the direction that, of what you specifically need is hard for people. So we'll put the Pocono Info line up, I'm sure, on the bottom of the screen so that, what is that number off the top? Do you know that off the top of your head? It's 570-517. 3954. And they can call that at any time? They can call that at any time during the day okay. and reach someone on, on the line and then they can do their searches online at PoconoInfo.org okay. whenever they want. It's available 24-7 and there is a opportunity to change the, the website into one's native language so that they can do their searches um, in the language that they feel most comfortable um, reading in. That's wonderful. In. Yeah, that's wonderful. I think we have 14% Hispanic now in, in the county, so in Monroe County, so mm -hmm. that's a good, uh, a good little tool there for people to be able to navigate through. One of the programs that you've recently announced is um, Bridges Out of Poverty, which mm -hmm. I am a huge fan of this program. I think it's absolutely wonderful, and I think it's something that a lot of people will take advantage of once they learn more about it. So how did this come about? First of all, as far as the program itself, has it been done in other areas or is it something new for us locally? Well, I'm going to let Arthur talk about our development, but the culture of Pocono Alliance as an organization is to think of ideas of how to create new solutions. Uh, we keep going back to that. And one of the things that we find very, very important um, is to be culturally relevant and practically sound in the way that we help people. And we don't want to create Band-Aid solutions that um, encourage people to be reliant on our services for the long term. We want to move people beyond that into self-sufficiency. And so Arthur can talk a little bit about how we um, took this national model and made it uh, something local for us. Uh, it all started about two years ago, uh, the process. I attended a seminar up at King's College that was offered uh, by uh, Judith Bell out of Louisiana about Bridges Out of Poverty. And it was uh, simply to see what uh, alternatives there might be to assist people in poverty to move to self-sufficiency. 
And after the initial seminar, uh, I decided to then start doing some research and uh, calling around the country, calling the national centers in uh, Texas and in Ohio to find out more about bridges and what it really entailed. And so it's, it's been a, a process of about two years to try to get all the parts uh, together and to see where we can go with it in Monroe County uh, in order to, again, as Michael uh, pointed out, to assist uh, in the transition of people in poverty, whether it be generational poverty or situational poverty, to self-sufficiency and what that process entails. Um, what we are trying to do with Bridges is to build a sustainable community because what we want to try to do is to pass on uh, the success of our community to future generations and build that success so that future generations have that and have access to it. Now, Representative Scavello is Monroe County. I have Monroe and Pike County, but you're based out of more of Monroe County. Do we have some statistics? We, we do have a very serious problem in Monroe County with some of the poverty levels. Do you have some statistics that, that you could give us without putting you on the spot there too much? Sure. Um, we coordinate with a lot of the other agencies in the community. And so we're aware that there are tons of people that are contacting services and not being helped. Um, roughly, it's about 29,000 individuals that can meet the federally qualified uh, poverty guidelines, which means that they are living in um, lifestyles that, that are very dangerous for their future, that they are um, in environments that are not productive and not um, encouraging um, growth for their children and for their next generations. And so we see those individuals um, constantly contacting the different services in Monroe County, and we see that as, as a problem for the long term. We want to encourage them to be able to um, adopt different mentalities and, and principles that can hopefully produce a, a future that is, um, as Arthur said, self-sustaining, that there's stability in their home instead of um, what bridges out of poverty um, terms as living in the tyranny of the moment. You know, it, I love the bridges out of poverty. You know, give me some examples. Like, for example, I, I see uh, folks that smoke mm -hmm. that really can't afford it. Sure. And it creates all the other health aspects of it. Mm -hmm. is, is that something that you look at as well? Or you just look at, you know, how where they spend their money, how they spend their money. Mm -hmm. You help them manage their dollars. Uh, Bridges Out of Poverty actually has three stages. It's the Bridges Out of Poverty uh, training, which tries to uh, enhance and bring the community in to make systemic changes in our community mm -hmm. uh, through leaders in the community, business leaders, and so forth, uh, to address the barriers that people in poverty have. The second stage is called Getting Ahead, uh, which is the family uh, educational component. Uh, in that component, which is five months long, uh, we deal with th issues that you have just mentioned. We deal with financial issues, coping skills, behavioral skills, self-assessment as to uh, what choices they made uh, that were not really good in the past, um, where they can make better choices. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about their resources, identifying the fact that in order to be a successful person, I need to be successful in certain resources, whether it be financial resources, mental, physical, coping skills, relationships, uh, even spiritual. So we discuss those resources and we identify the resources where the families who participate in it, where they're strong, because families in poverty do have strong resources, especially in the area of relationships, but they also have weaknesses. So we identify those weaknesses. And then we try to address or will address how can we improve that situation during the, tw during the five months and the 20 week session. So we do address issues like that. We will bring in financial components and financial uh, uh, people who will address those issues. We will deal with nutritional issues in the family. We'll deal with family structure uh, and how that is enhanced, educational uh, components that will also be involved in this. So the 20 week spectrum is, is, is uh, very wide and will be driven by the families who are there, who are participating in this endeavor to try to move from poverty to self-sufficiency. Uh, and we are, we'll bring in outside resources to help uh, supplement all that m information as well. Sounds like a great program. So, I just hope yeah. you get the participation. 
Well, and that's where we're really excited about this because it is something that is in involving other partners in the community. Uh, we have a, a great feeder um, system that we're developing right now that allows other agencies to identify people that can really benefit from this, um, whether it's from the social services or from the business community of employees that they want to develop some of these skills. Uh, because there, there is that aspect that it is going to um, improve the entire community, not just the community for people that are in poverty. Sure. And the reason why we say that is because these individuals are being trained in all aspects of life, including preventative health. Mm -hmm. We have one of the busiest emergency rooms in, in the state, yeah. and we want to help people learn, take care of these measures early, and so then you don't need to call off from, from work as often as you do. Right. If we can help develop it and change some of the, the, the mentalities of people that go through this program, they're going to be more productive at work. They're going to have less absenteeism because it's not going to be the tyranny of the moment. They're going to plan out their future that they have an appointment, they're going to make the appropriate adjustments for that. And so that means more productivity at work, that means less absenteeism, less turnover, and that means more businesses are going to be making more money. And that is economic development at, at its best. And they create mm -hmm. more jobs. More jobs mm -hmm. are going to be created. Yeah. Yeah. These individuals will then uh, mature through their, their companies and see that there is opportunities to grow even if they start at the, the ground level. It really is a total reorganization of, of someone's life and their thought processes, looking, relooking at everything in their life to see how they can improve it for long term. Yes. Not just a short term fix, a very long term fix that could really, I mean, change them forever, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we spoke about previously was keeping people focused once they are in the program. And one of the reasons why we're doing the show today is to try to let the viewers know that this program is out there and looking for participation from people who may really have the dedication and the focus to do it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and also looking for community partners mm -hmm. as mentors, right? That would also be willing to um, take people through the process and help them with some skills as well. Sure. So I, I think maybe we should go back a little bit to if you're interested, if you're one of those people that feel that um, you, you, you've kind of hit this poverty level and you've hit that stage in life where you need guidance, you need help, you really know you need to rework your life for the future. How do we start this? How, if they're interested and they're watching, how do we start, where do we go? What they can do, there's one of two ways that a family who wishes to work at this, and this is gonna be a very hard uh, process for them. It's not, it's not a five month process. There is actually a year and a half mentoring process that's involved, so it's two years at the minimum. But if a family uh, wishes to uh, work toward that uh, and go through that difficult stage, uh, they can contact me at Pocono uh, Alliance at the number or, uh, or the website. We have applications on our website at Pocono Alliance that they can uh, fill out and be referred to me. And then I would bring them into the office uh, to fill out an application. But uh, as Michael said earlier, uh, through our recruitment team uh, of volunteers, um, they can be referred to from, by churches, uh, by agencies such as Head Start, Family Promise, Women's Resources, uh, educational institutions can refer families, uh, giving them some background as to what the process is, that it is a 20-week process of educational material, but then it is another year and a half of mentoring that takes place. And so once they, uh, those agencies uh, refer or give them that information, they can refer them to me uh, and then we will go through the application process to get them into the program. Uh, and uh, that would be a process uh, that will be including the uh, team members that we have working for us at this time. Let's take a short break. Legislative report will return in a moment. Did you know that Act 16 of 1999 honors one of the greatest leaders in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives? The Matthew J. Ryan Legislative Office Building, once known as the Capitol Annex, 
is located next to the main Capitol building and honors the late Speaker of the House, Matthew J. Ryan. Those who visit this building will observe the magnificent architectural designs providing eloquence and grandeur to the building. Known as one of the greatest members in the history of the Pennsylvania State House, Matthew Ryan started his career in the legislature in 1963 and was elected Speaker in 1981. His charisma and knowledge will forever be reflected in the building now named after this great legislative leader. Now you know. Did you know that in the corridors in the first floor of the capital of Pennsylvania, there are nearly 400 individual mosaics? The idea for creating these intricate tiles was first suggested by Henry C. Mercer in 1902. A year later, he received the commission to prove 16,000 square feet of pavement tiles for the great rotunda and corridors of the new state capitol building in Harrisburg. Mercer set about designing subjects for approximately 400 mosaics. He chose as his general theme the history of Pennsylvania, and he soon realized that his tiles could tell stories. Although the arrangement seems random, the mosaics are very thoughtfully placed in the floor. The tile sequence is roughly chronological, beginning at one end with the scenes depicting the Native Americans. The mosaics progress into the story of European habitation in the New World and encompass the Commonwealth's triumph through process and intervention. Now you know. Welcome back. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello. And I'm Representative Rosemary Brown. Our guests today are from Pocono Alliance and we're discussing the Bridges Out of Poverty program. And we just took a quick short break, but we were just discussing if somebody was interested in participating in the Bridges Out of Poverty program, a family, how to get in touch with you. But then you also have several stages of this program mm -hmm. that they should be well aware of um, as they're joining on. And so hopefully their commitment is there throughout the program to be successful. So we'll take you into the next few stages if you want to discuss that in detail. Thank you. Uh, the Bridges Out of Poverty is the first stage, and that's the community component. Again, where I had stated earlier that uh, we need community members, we need the leaders of the community who can make changes in, these, in the systems to, to reduce barriers in our, in our community because we're trying to build a sustainable community. Whether the barriers be in predatory lend uh, lending practices or preventive health care or housing or transportation or uh, businesses can make changes within their own companies. We really have to start addressing uh, new ideas, proposing uh, ideas that are out of the box uh, because old ideas are not functioning properly at, at this time. So we need to really start thinking outside the box. That's the community piece. The uh, piece for the families would be a, a two-stage approach, would be the getting ahead educational approach and the year and a half mentoring approach where families would go through a two-year process to transition from uh, poverty to self-sufficiency without the addition of additional funds. What this process really includes is a very strong mentoring piece by people from the, uh, from the public, from the, uh, the community. Uh, this program does not survive or does not work unless we have volunteers from the community. Volunteers that do a number of different things, uh, uh, pr uh, providing meals for us at our meetings, uh, making those meals, uh, providing the child care that will be necessary during the training and during the uh, circles program of the year and a half mentoring uh, because there is a very uh, uh, regimented uh, 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 program for children because we have studies have shown that children quickly adopt the, the issues of poverty and we need to work with them and we're working with them in different financial areas as well as literacy and then finally the mentoring piece where uh, graduates of getting ahead once they do uh, finish the process, will be uh, paired with two mentors from the community, from middle class or upper class, for the next year and a half to help fulfill their plan for the future, to help provide the social capital that's necessary, the social resources, the reinforcement, the support to help them make the correct decisions. Um, and so that way, this way, if a family who is transitioning uh, has difficulties, they have someone to go to to help them make a good choice rather than go back to old habits. And so the entire process is a community process to make those systemic changes, as well as to make the changes and the support mechanism for the families in poverty. And that is where we need mentors um, from the community. Anyone that is listening that wants to participate, 
This is where you are supporting other individuals in your community. You're never serving as an ATM, but as just a guide, as, as a, somebody that, that cares about the life of another person to help make the decisions when uh, life happens, when problems come up and you don't know how to navigate through those situations. These mentors provide that guidance because if we're honest with ourselves, each one of us has gotten to where we are in life based on the resources and the relationships that we have. We know certain people that have guided us, uh, whether it be a family member or somebody else in, the, in our social network that has assisted us, and then resources to get certain things done. I know I couldn't have gone to college without the support of my, my mother giving me some of the financial resources to do that. And so those are some of the things that we see as, as critical, but then also just that, that resource of, um, of support of emotional support that says, we are going to be there together, we're going to walk through this, and we're going to hold you up when you feel like you might fall down. Sounds like a great, it almost sounds like Big Brothers Big Sisters in some way, because mm -hmm. you, am I right? You, you know, sure. and, but this is on a much greater scale, and uh, I, I just think uh, it's something that definitely is needed, and uh, I, I commend you for uh, taking this on. Mm -hmm. And one of the other hooks for the, the business community because we, we mentioned economic development a little bit, and I just want to touch on that a little bit further. Entire companies have adopted Bridges Out of Poverty in, in other areas, mm -hmm. where they had their um, upper management go through Bridges to understand the hidden rules of, of, of class and of poverty, and to understand their employees a little bit better. And then they had their entry-level staff members go through the Getting Ahead program so that they can develop some of those skills that, that we were talking about. And then what they had was their upper management mentor the individuals at, at the ground level. And this one company out of Michigan adopted this, and it's a larger company, mm -hmm. but they saved or retained an additional $500,000 in their first year of doing this because they had more productivity, they had workers that really cared about the company and saw a future in, in the company that they can grow in. Mm -hmm. And as I said, they weren't calling off and they weren't uh, living in the, the panic mode of something came up and I have to call off of work and then they get fired because of that, they had success. And I think what can some of the businesses in our community do with a couple extra hundred thousand dollars? Right, a lot. A lot for the a community, lot. a lot for the business community to grow, um, to attract more business, to, to get more jobs in the area. It, it's something that is attractive for the entire community and that's why we're seeking business partners, we're seeking the um, individuals that might be retired and, and want to put in some time into the, the life of another person. And there's quite a bit of them in Monroe that would probably would, mm -hmm. would love to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing is too that the, uh, by doing exactly what you described, the, 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 these employees are also going to take care of themselves, physically take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like you said, not, not just calling off from work, but the cost of health care to these yes. companies might be reduced. If you can a smoking sensation program, not to have to smoke mm -hmm. uh, cigarettes and, and, and that expense in their pockets, but also to their health and so many other issues. Mm -hmm. It's really it's, it's really a great program and it really takes it from all levels <clears throat> with the whole community involved. And I think the long-term benefits to the families that stay committed are very obvious even before we see any results here. And I, I'm really looking forward to it starting. So I was very happy to hear about it initially, and I think it's very much needed in our community. So thank you very much. And we're going to go a little bit back to Pocono Alliance to, to talk a little bit about Pocono Info and a little bit more on how people can utilize the information in our community. Well, as I said, the organization Pocono Alliance has a culture of connecting people with resources. And so Bridges Out of Poverty certainly is going to be doing that for, for families. And pairing them up with the individuals that want to help plan this because it is a national model that we're making local so we are uh, changing some things around to give it our own local flair. Uh, but the idea behind Pocono Alliance is to work with families from um, their little ones to um, all ages. Whatever their need is, we want to be able to connect them. As I said, Pocono Info, uh, being the helpline for the entire county, has this huge database that has every service in it that is made available whether it is support through a food pantry, uh, we want them to find the one that is closest to, to their family. It can be a support group for uh, an issue that they might be going through or a disease, and it is important that they find the other people that, that can support them. Uh, if 
finding out that maybe an uh, elderly relative uh, recently fell in is going to need support services. We want them to be able to connect it very quickly. Instead of, setting, instead of spending uh, hours searching through phone books and trying to track down who's the, the place that they need to call, we have experts that know these services inside and out and can expedite that process for them so that they can make it a more enjoyable process out of something that might be very difficult in their life. But that is just one aspect that, that we go into. Uh, with children, we want them to have the best start for, for themselves. And so we have programs that, that educate children and fit into this concept of really making children see their future right from the get-go. We have a getting ready for kindergarten calendar that has been supported by both of you for, for several um, <laughs> uh, productions that is something that we think is just fabulous. It has a different activity every day of the, the year for children to guide um, their lives. Parents are able to take resources from their home and help stimulate a, lo a love of learning. So uh, we want them to be ready for school and school readiness is something that begins in the home. But then also we want to make sure that they don't have any deficiencies and so we have the Healthy Start screening program and that is something that we have been doing um, since 2005 where we take children um, under the age of five and send them through a screening process. Everything from hearing, vision, autism, cognitive development to make sure that they're ready for, for kindergarten. Because if we can correct some of those issues from the get-go, oh yeah. they're going to have a, a much brighter success story. Yeah. Why don't you give some of your partners, some of the folks that you deal with, uh, the, the organizations that, that uh, if you don't mind, and what we'll do is we get a list and we're going to scroll that also on the screen before the end of the program. I, oh, think, sure. I think it's important. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a United Way partner agency, and so they offer us support. Uh, we work closely with uh, the grants office to um, help identify areas of need. Uh, but we are constantly contacting the, the Salvation Army, the Red Cross, Women's Resources uh, of Monroe County, um, Center for Vision Loss, um, the County Assistance Office. Um, there, there's so many partners that are doing great things out in the community. Um, the Path House is, is a, another resource that uh, we are constantly working with. Either we're sending people to them or they're using our services to help build okay. their, uh, build their uh, network for, for resources. Um, Family Promise is another organization that, that we actually created and then birthed it off so that they can have success on, on, their, own, on their own terms. Some, some great, uh, oh, yeah. great, great They're all are great of, organizations. Of accomplishments. Yeah. They all work very nicely together throughout the community. And when you hear the list yeah. of all of them that work together, mm -hmm. I don't know if everyone realizes how many there are that are working to help the community. I know so. that you and your staff are very, very into helping people. And um, you know, I, I thank you for, for what, you, what you're doing and what you will continue to do. And I think that the next step is this Bridges program, which I think is really takes it to the next level. And, uh, and that's what you really want to see, people be able to take care of themselves. And you're giving them that opportunity. And uh, so I'm just hoping out there that we get some companies that are going to jump, join in, some individuals, retired individuals that are going to help, because I'm really excited about this. And uh, if we can help in any way, I'm sure we will be we want to help. It's <laughs> greatly appreciated. I'm already cooking. Rosemary. I'm already cooking for <laughs> how many people do we expect? Uh, uh, the, 60, the kickoff. About 60, yep. <laughs> I think my staff said, you're cooking for that many people. <laughs> but this is a, it's a great thing. We look forward to it. It's very good for the community. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. That's all the time we have for today's program. If you have any questions about any state matter, please feel free to contact myself or Representative Brown at our local offices. That information will be shown in a moment. Thanks for watching, and please join us next time for another edition of Legislative Report.